I've always said if you don't have uh, if you don't need a basket to collect your eggs you don't have enough chickens all right well we got a decent amount there that's our haul for being away for three days what's up guys Daniel here with the Nakers doing some uh, chores here taking out the trash actually but I uh, wanted to grab the camera as usual <clears throat> and talk real quick here's Betty and Bernard say hello yeah I wanted to actually talk about Betty and Bernard here real quick so we were out of town for a couple days here at the end of spring break we actually head over, went over to Branson um, went to Silver Dollar City Went to Dolly Stampede. Really great show, by the way, if you've never been. <clears throat> Had a good time. But anyways, the dogs were alone. If you watched one of my previous videos, I told you about how uh, we, I call it an automated system, but we have a feeder, uh, water. So the dogs pretty much can be uh, tended to without having to be tended to. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we were gone for three days. And uh, I do have uh, security cam cameras all over the property. so. Um, as some of you who follow the channel know, we previously had issues with um, getting out of our property and going after coyotes. Well, during our three days, uh, surprisingly, no, they did not leave our property. And ever since I shot that one video that had a lot of views about them going after the coyotes, they haven't really left our property. Um, maybe one time. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to dump the compost here. Maybe one time they uh, left since I, I shot that video. But anyhow, they were here the entire time we were away. Well, let's see, we got back two days ago. So yesterday, believe it or not, woke up and they were gone. <clears throat> um, I had to go into the office, but... Uh, I knew they were gone because normally they greet me in the morning, usually around the driveway or the patio. Um, so I know they're home because they're around in the morning, but they were not present. So instantly I knew something was off. I checked the security cameras while I was at work and uh, my wife was home, but she was still, she was getting the kids ready. And uh, I knew they were gone. Uh, about nine o'clock in the morning a police officer shows up uh our city one of the city cops we're, we live in a small town outside of kansas city by the way and um he shows up at the door and he tells us that or he comes in and or comes up and says are you missing two dogs wife answers the door yes we are um gets our name number and uh, about an hour or so later we get the owner of a nearby business um, stop by he knocks on the door tells us that uh, he uh, saw our dogs heading towards the freeway and um, we do live well you probably heard the trains here we have train tracks right across the street we have uh, a highway that's about a half mile down west of us. So a uh, business owner came by, told us that uh, he saw our dogs. Um, I chatted with my wife. I told her, well, if they're headed towards that business, or if, if the business owner saw them, they're probably not that far away. So I had to go outside and ring the, ring the bell. Now I use this bell system. So every time I do that, I would give them treats. So I, it was a long shot, but I had to, had to ring the bell surprisingly they heard the bell and they came back and uh, there's a video I have from the security uh, camera of them coming back crossing the train tracks those are the trains right there right literally right across the street from us they were gone I don't know for how long how many hours but just as they were coming across the street I kid you not, Bernard almost got hit by a car. Like this car was going faster than it should have been. My wife was kind of screaming back, no, 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 you know, screaming at Bernard not to cross the street. Obviously he didn't know, 
but Betty and Bernard were crossing the street right as the car was just speeding down. And uh, luckily, they survived. Uh, I tell you this because there's, I know a lot of controversy with the, our dogs being on the shock collars, or electric collars. Um, the reason we have them on that is just because we don't have a fence um, property. And uh, because the collar really is just meant to deter them. And we know these dogs roam. Um, and if we could let them roam, we would. But for their safety, um, we don't want them to. And that's why. So once they were back, I came home. Once they were back, I, I knew something was off. Because after I, I examined the security footage, which I'll try to post and show you of them coming back to our property, um, something was off. Because they did not hesitate to come back into our property line. Normally when they leave our boundary and they come back, they're hesitant to come back in because they know by crossing that boundary, they'll get the shock or they'll hear the beep. Now, currently the beep is all that's on. So they, they've been retrained. They know that the shock is associated with the beep. They hear the beep, they don't cross the boundary. There was no hesitation for them to come back into the property. So I knew something was off. Well, that was after watching the security camera. Well, I came home instantly I uh, checked to make sure that their collar was on them, and it was. <clears throat> so, so Bernard's is on where the probes are, ma are making contact. Betty, I actually have hers pretty loose. Her probes don't even touch her. So even if the shock was on, she wouldn't even get shocked because it's not even making skin, it's not even making contact with their skin. But once again, they've been trained so that they know with that beep, once they hear that beep, they instantly back away from the boundary shock or not they they just associate that discomfort with the beep well the collars were on so my uh thinking was that something was off i didn't think it was the line i came over here into the barn <clears throat> this is where i have the transmitter plugged in for the electric fence or for the collar <clears throat> lo and behold this uh, plug the power adapter got jostled out and was knocked out so the transmitter was down so I point this out because if you've watched one of my previous videos I had mentioned that these guys Brady and Bernard are constantly testing the boundaries testing their collars so even though they know where the perimeter is at uh, I know for one they test the, the boundaries because their battery runs out much quicker than it probably should and two they wouldn't have left the property if they didn't test their boundaries so test by testing the boundaries i mean they'll approach the perimeter and if they don't hear that beep they'll just continue to go until they hear the beep of the collar with that transmitter down they didn't hear the beep and so that's why they're gone and they were gone so they they went off on a good uh adventure apparently we had members of uh, our community posting on on facebook um expressing their concerns which we certainly appreciate uh, I, I didn't have any doubts that they were going to come back, but obviously with concerns for their safety, we were hoping they would come back sooner um, so that we could uh, make sure they were obviously back safely. But anyhow, that was their adventure. That was their spring break, as my wife called it. Um, they had their fun. But uh, yeah, it was a, quite a relief <clears throat> that the uh, reason that they left the property was just because the, the transmitter was unplugged and not that they were willing to tolerate that shock. I know uh, a lot of folks have commented recently about the collar just the, the, them not it, it not working um, or that they won't uh, they'll, they'll take the shock because they are tolerant to pain. Well I, I do agree with that but I also will say that the discomfort of that shock once they're trained with it um and then they associate with the, associate that with the beep that is enough to really discourage them from getting out we've had coyote sightings uh recently again and um i've sat here and watched them waiting to see if they would run out past uh, after the coyotes and they have not and so like i said i have retrained them and by retraining what i mean is i've taken them uh, turn the shock back on with their collar, taking them around the perimeter, and as soon as they hear that beep, as soon as I try to approach that perimeter and they hear that beep and they feel that instant shock, they pull back and I also yank them back and tell them no. And then you do that several times, and then finally you turn 
the shock off and then you leave just the beep on. At that point, they pretty much just associate that discomfort with the beep. So, and I've seen they'll go, uh, they'll go, they'll approach the perimeter with that shock off. As soon as they hear that beep, they back up. Even though they don't feel anything, they just hear that beep and they back up. So it does work. Uh, you have to properly train them um, and I would say regularly retrain them. And then of course our, our system of giving them treats, ringing a bell, giving them a treat, that's kind of our way of you know checking to make sure they're on the property. I'll step out on the patio, bring, that, bring our triangle is what it is. And as soon as they come up, we'll give them some chicken gizzards and hot dogs and beef scraps. And uh, that's actually what called them back uh, yesterday when they were off. My wife rang the triangle. They were off on the other side of the tracks. They actually heard it. And they came uh, back into the property and now they're back home. So. That's that, just wanted to share that uh, quick story with you since the dogs were on an adventure. And I know a lot of you folks are here because you enjoy, not my ugly mug, but you enjoy watching Betty and Bernard. Um, lately here in Kansas City, well, we did have some really nice weather. Now it's kind of turned into spring winter weather. Uh, we got a lot of rain here, so it's pretty nasty out. and. Uh, the dogs were hiding out in their shelter earlier as they usually do when it's raining but now that it's not raining they are out looks like they're playing hide and seek with each other bernard is pretty much waiting to pounce betty is what it looks like there he goes 